Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Math Class. Today's trigonometry topic is the unit circle. If we have a circle in the coordinate plane with the origin of 0, 0 and a radius of 1, this is the unit circle. And notice that we can select any point on the circle and there will be an x, y coordinate for that point. Also, we can reference the section of the circle based on our quadrants, which come from coordinate geometry. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4, which will be important for us in later calculations. Now, looking at here, for example, the point I've plotted in quadrant 1. I can connect a line from the origin to that point, and I know that the length of that line is 1. The radius is 1, and that is the same, that is the radius of the circle. I can draw infinitely many radii inside the circle. This is one that I've drawn that will be the same length as all of the others, 1. Now, from here, we were, we're going to see our connection to trigonometry. If I drop down vertically from that point to the x-axis, I've now formed a right triangle. And that triangle has a base, which has a length of something less than 1, has a height, which has a length of something less than 1, and has a hypotenuse, and the length of the hypotenuse is 1. Now, if you recall from our trigonometric functions, we reference cosine as the relationship between the adjacent side, which is the bottom of this triangle, and the hypotenuse. And we're going to reference the x-coordinate as cosine. The adjacent side, adjacent to the angle that we formed, the length of that side is based on the degree of measure of the angle. And the x-coordinate we will refer to as cosine of the angle. And the y-coordinate, how high the y-coordinate is, is based on the length of the opposite side of the angle. Opposite side we learned in our trigonometric functions relates to sine. So we will reference the y-coordinate is the sine of the angle. So now we can think about in the unit circle when we're working with trigonometry, we can think about the x and y coordinates as cosine of angle and sine of angle. And just like we did with the triangles working with our original trigonometric functions work, I can label these sides as, I'll extend the h to be hypotenuse, the bottom leg of this triangle is adjacent. And the right side of the triangle, the other leg, is opposite. So this is the same right triangle concept we were working with previously, looking at our trigonometric functions. We simply put it into the unit circle. Now, not all triangles have a hypotenuse of 1, but the relationships among the three sides will be the same whether we have a small triangle or a large triangle. They're all driven by the angle measure. So that's what we're working with in the unit circle. We can apply the same concepts to larger triangles, triangles that don't have a hypotenuse of 1. But for understanding purposes, we'll start with the unit circle and the trigonometric functions. And I can create a triangle anywhere in the circle. I can connect the other point that I plotted with xy in the third quadrant, and then create a perpendicular to the x-axis going up. I form a right angle. And here also, my xy coordinates are cosine angle and sine angle. And just like the xy coordinates aren't the same for this point, the cosine angle, sine angle 
coordinates are not the same. Cosine angle, sine angle coordinates here match to the xy. Notice now that I'm in the third quadrant, I would have a negative x value and a negative y value. The same applies to my cosine angle and sine angle. I'll have negative values for the measurements in the third quadrant. If I were to go up into the second quadrant, I would have a different situation. The fourth quadrant, I have a different situation. We can consider the characteristics of each quadrant to make a general statement regarding cosine and sine in each quadrant. In quadrant one, cosine of angle is positive and sine of angle is positive. In quadrant two, the x-coordinate is negative, so cosine of angle is negative. And sine of angle is positive. In quadrant three, both values are negative. xy-coordinates are both negative, so cosine of angle is negative. And sine of angle is negative. And then in quadrant four, we're moving right on the x-axis and down on the y-axis. So we have cosine positive and sine negative. And it's helpful to know these four different scenarios. Going from quadrant one to quadrant four, cosine is positive, negative, negative, positive. Sine is positive, positive, negative, negative. And the third main trigonometric function, tangent, remember is sine divided by cosine. So if we divide positive by positive or negative by negative in quadrants one and three, we will end up with a positive tangent for quadrants one and three. And in quadrants two and four, we're dividing a positive with a negative, so the result will be a negative tangent. If you remember cosine and sine, then you can derive the sine of the resulting tangent. And now I've added in two more examples, one point on the unit circle in quadrant two, and one point in the unit circle in quadrant four. We'll end this video here, and in the next video, we'll look at the process of calculating the actual cosine and sine values for points on the unit circle.